So, date of today, our Sunday meet at Jesus the Christ Ministries, mission 2nd of the 9th, 2012. We're into part 2 of uh, the lonely Nazarene and recapping last week we seen that uh, the Lord is not lonely but because of the uh, churches many of them are cash strapped today and uh, the cash cow is dying slowly but surely dying and uh, all sorts of things are going to happen due to lawlessness and disorder but we know that the scriptures tell us that all things must be done decently and in order. Decently and in order. So uh, before we go into a reread of our script that we're using in Matthew 21, I just want to say a couple of things um, regarding lawlessness and disorder. They're the two major they're the two major uh, um, pillars of the last days. Lawlessness and disorder. And, and in between those two columns and pillars, all sorts of things are happening. And uh, we know that Samson brought the two pillars down in the temple. Well, you know, the Word of God always does bring the pillars down of lawlessness and disorder every time and just clears the road of all the debris and we know that Dr Patel of Indian origin and uh, he is going to court this week and facing charges of three deaths and uh, or at least as far as I know two deaths and a casualty but then again it might be three deaths and a casualty uh, the man originally got seven years prison for three lives, very lawless there, and also um, no order there. And then we have this week uh, also mentioned the three children who who died at the hands of a man, and uh, he got seven years prison. So it's uh, none of it adds up, does it? In a um, in a society today that is Christless. This is the wages of a Christless society. This is what we're going to receive when Christ, Christ is not ruling. Where, you know, righteousness, um, abounds and where righteousness is, the people rejoice. When things have been done right, hey? But the, the, the people moan where wickedness is, is is in rule and um, we have the crooked trades people going through the land crooked trades people um, uh, ripping off the pensioners and the seniors and robbing uh, people of their hard-earned cash hey and the government turn around and slap their wrist and allow them to go on doing these things you know, I don't, I just can't get my head around that. They, they should jail these people. Well and truly put them in jail and be off with them until they learn their lesson. A decent sentence, you know. And um, not the seven years prison for three people's lives. I mean, that should be at least a 25 year old. And then you might start after 25 years, think of parole. After 25 years, jail at least. And that would be per person. <laughs> you know, if I was in, in charge, that's for sure. Hey? So, um, the, the um, lawless system, uh, wrist-slapping system we have, reminds me of Eli uh, in the Bible uh, who was he had the power and the authority to do the job, but he just let his sons go their way, didn't he? He just let them go on, let his sons, uh, uh, and eventually 
It was a neck breaker, wasn't it? It was a neck breaker and destruction all round. So let's go into Matthew 21 today, part two of the lonely Nazarene, or is it the lowly Nazarene? Part two of the lonely, the lonely Nazarene. Matthew 21, verse 1. Now when they drew near Jerusalem, came to Bethphage, at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying, and go into the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied in the colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say to them, the Lord has need of them and immediately he will send them. Matthew 21, 4. All this was done that it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by the prophet. Hey? Which was spoken by the prophet saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly, sitting on a donkey, the colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey, they brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them and sent him on them. And a very large multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches <coughs> from the trees, <coughs> spread them on the road. And then the multitudes who <coughs> went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the high. Matthew 21, 10. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought, sold in the temple, overturned the tables of the money changers, the seats of those who sold the doves. Final verses 13 today. Matthew 21, 13. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of things, a house of communication, communicating with God. The theme in the house of God is God, is Jesus. That is the theme. And they recognized Jesus uh, of Nazareth, from Nazareth of Galilee. Recognize him as a prophet. And the very next verse there in verse 12 says, Then Jesus went into the temple. The prophet went into the temple and started explaining to them that um, the house of God is not about money. Hello? Are you listening? The house of God is not about money. That was the key word in verse 12. Key word in verse 11 was they recognized him, the multitudes rec recognized and gave him recognition to be a prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Prophets are always on about money, but they're not interested in money. But they're always on about money, saying, hey, people are blabbing about money all the time. You know, they're not taking faith in the Son of God. Hey? God is bigger than any money. God is bigger. Look, God never gave us money. Listen, God gave us faith. Do you think that he would give you something inferior? Hey? He gave us faith. He said he'd given us all a measure. Not a measure of money, but a measure of faith in him then it's in your hands 
up to the measure of cause. So, our message today is part two of the lowly Nazarene. Not the lonely, even though I've called it the lonely Nazarene. Maybe to emphasise that the churches today have degraded Jesus in many ways, dragged him down. Even as the multitude in Matthew 21, 11 said, the multitude, most people say, oh, we'll let him have, be a prophet or we'll let him be a reincarnated one like Jeremiah or John the Baptist. Or but, oh, not Messiah, not, not uh, God manifested in the flesh. Can someone say amen? amen. But we know uh, that Jesus is not lonely. Hey? Eh? We know that Jesus is God Almighty. We know that Jesus is not uh, without. Hey? We know that Jesus um, uh, came to help us, not for us to help him. <laughs> hey? So we looked at last week, recapping uh, that uh, um, the L on, on lowly Nazarene. He's not lonely, he's lowly. I was reading a, a, a um, uh, periodical yesterday where um, uh, these people claim to be contending for the fight and I was looking at their sales in their, of their books and DVDs and one book was called, uh, um, you know, um, Walking in the Light and uh, other books were in DVDs, Believing God and walking by faith, and, and on every one of these articles, there was a price tag. You know what I mean? And I, I, I wondered about that. I wondered about that. And I always wonder, and always have wondered, since the day that the Lord showed me clearly, how can you continue to go on like that and label it fame? I was talking to the graphic artist of this magazine, contending earnestly for the fight, by email, and now he, he's apparently left. He's no longer the gra that graphic artist. I was talking to him a couple of weeks ago by email. He said, have you got any problems with um, Phil Powell and contending earnestly for the fight or Christian Witness Ministries? You better address them. I said, I said to him, I always address them. It's like I don't even say a word. They just ignore me. And uh, he's no longer working for them. I don't know whether he was getting wages or what. I, that's none of my business. I don't really care. But I did say in the magazine um, that uh, there'll be, uh, you know, the magazine will be costing an extra thousand dollars due to they had to hire a graphic artist. And don't forget the minimum, nominal minimum fee of $30 for the magazine a year or whatever, or donation. And I asked the question, did, did the look, did the Lord call this man to do the magazine or where the Lord guides the old Pentecostal saying, when the Lord, where the Lord guides, the Lord provides. <laughs> Well, he doesn't seem to be providing there. Hey? Best that, you know, look to the scriptures and see that they, the men of God went into the prayer closet and complained. You know what I mean? Full stop, period. He's the lowly Nazarene. And we said the L was for light. He's the light of the world, not a 60 watt Osram light bulb, light of the world and he came and said he's the light of the world because the world is full of darkness, even though the sun may be shining the light is full of, the world is full of darkness hey and he is the real light be sure that the light in you is not dark misleading satanic dark light or well, the lies of the devil. The devil gave his first dosing of dark light to Eve. That was dark light. You will not die. <laughs> you, 
you can eat the fruit. And it would sound nice, and it was even maybe a lighter burden. Lighter burden? Hey? And she answered to the devil, brought havoc for the world. Last week we said lowly, L-O-W-L-Y, the O was for omni. We know that the Lord is not lonely because he's all-knowing. He's all-present. <coughs> he's all-powerful. How can um, uh, one who is all be missing something, be, be lonely or afraid? Or... He is on me. Hello, and we are, they're the only letters we dealt with out of the lowly last week. We had a look how great he was in that omni uh, word, that he come riding on a donkey. He wasn't trying to puff himself up to be accepted. He come riding, the design of his entry was the foal of a donkey. Yeah? He wasn't puffing himself up so that people would be attracted to him. The Bible says he was of no comely appearance. You're listening? Isaiah 53. He was not esteemed highly by the Jews. Hey? There's a lot of talk out there about, about the Palestinians and the Jews and the, and, and the rapture and pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, post-tribulation, oh, Armageddon and all these subjects. The Hebrew and the Greek and Notre Dame and, and, and who's doing what in the zoo? Secular and religious zoos. But at the end of the day, we're told not to look anywhere else except to the author and the finisher of the phone. And all the rest will take its place. And the mark of the beast and how tattoos are preempt to the mark of the beast and tattooing and blah, 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 blah. Who cares? Look, you can have tattoos galore. What's that mean? What's that got to do with your heart? Tattoos. What's that got to do with it? When Jesus comes, you're not going to judge whether you got tattoos or not. The mark of the beast. Will you take the mark of the beast? Well, it's written. A moron can understand it. Don't take the mark of the beast on your forehand or your forehead. No matter what, that's it. Let's move on. It's the same with prayer. Well, we're having a prayer meeting at the church and prayer this and prayer that. Where's that? In the New Testament, you show me where it is. Holding prayer meetings all the time. Show me. It's a, it's a concoction of religious organisations. Should be out and about doing the work of the Lord. Show me where it is. I'll show you where they were in one accord praying in the upper room. Is that right? Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. Huh? Then you had the Pharisees and they made sure that everyone seen them pray. Didn't they? What does Jesus say when you pray? What do you do? You go into your closet. Is that right? Who are you with? Who are you with? Everyone in the church or on your own? Come on. Do we want to read the scriptures? Do we want to do it the Lord's way? Back to the Bible. Tell you what, if you went back to the Bible, you'd lose a lot of money. <laughs> lose a lot of fans. A lot of pretentious people won't come no more. 
Oh, we have 10 prayer meetings a week. Look, you know, prayer is between you and God. Bible study is between you and God. There is nothing wrong with a church gathering together to pray whenever. But I mean, to make a religion out of it is another story. Hey? Come on. I don't see it. I don't see it in the scriptures. We're told to pray without ceasing. Have prayer meetings without ceasing, is that right? No, pray without ceasing. When you pray, it's you communicating with God. The Lord's house is a house of communication. Communicating with God. Hey? As we go along on the narrow road, we, we just seem to cut away and cut away and cut away till we got this highly simple walk in the spirit, don't we? It's just so simple. It just sort of comes down to no rabbit season and no sandy season and and, and our rabbit season and, and Easter is cancelled out by carrying about the death of Christ in our own body daily, saying no to the devil and yes to Jesus. And Santa Claus, well, he's just totally wiped out because we're bigger givers than Santa Claus because he's a stingy tightwad who gives once a year. Can someone say amen? amen. I give every day. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! I give gold refined in a furnace. I give bread that does not perish. I give wine that's guaranteed to get the toes tapping and the joy bells ringing. True wine from the true vine. I give water that's guaranteed by Almighty God to quench your First, if you're a drunk. And you never have to go to an AA meeting again. Because you will be delivered. You will not be a dry drunk. You will be delivered. Because he come to set the captives half free. I mean free. He's on me. Today... We're going to look at the next letter in the word lowly. The W is not for Woolworths. It is, it is. Better so let's read the scripture. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 28, please. Hey? Matthew 28. And my Bible says in Matthew 28, 20, teach the people to observe all the things that I have commanded you to observe. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hey? And the low Lee one is with you. W is for will. He is with you when? On Sunday. No, on the Sabbath. Now he is with you when you when you feel like he's with you. I feel like he's with me. Now he said, Jesus said. I am with you always. Always. Right? And then he gives a double emphasis on that. And then he says, even to the end of the age. Even to the fullness of the extent of the entire existence of the earth. If that was possible for you to live that long, can you say amen? Lonely Nazarene? Lonely? Helpless? Hopeless? Hey? Beggar Nazarene? No. 
lowly, lowly, humble, all-powerful, almighty Nazarene. Prophet? No. Apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, and God Almighty manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached unto Gentiles and received on in the world, received up in the glory. Can someone say amen? amen? When we get that revelation, we read it, but do we receive what is said? We get a revelation when we receive that by faith and accept it. What happens is, when we read that he is with us always, that will absorb, that will absorb all the rigors of this life. Everything, everything, it will just soak it all up. He is with me. I've gone to the streets, byways, highways, marketplaces, in third world countries, villages, provinces, mountains, cities, and I've gone there with a revelation, not with a team, so to speak, every time, but I've gone there on my own at times, as if it was called to be, with that understanding and revelation, he is with me always. Who? The I am, he is with me always. The lowly Nazarene. Could you want anyone else with you? Would you insult the Lord with Doberman dogs and bodyguards, maybe? Or do you believe he is with you? So what's with the bodyguards? Maybe you're afraid to die. Maybe you are not like Paul the Apostle who said, I count not my life dear to me. It really doesn't matter if I die. Because my heart is right with God. You listening? Paul wasn't bogged down with pre-rapture, mid-rapture, post-rapture, or oh, Armageddon and food shortages and, you know, tins of beans and, and, and you know, this is going to be cut. Now. Oh, what will happen? Well, you might have to die. Hallelujah. But is your heart right with Jesus? That's all that matters. All the rest is just window dressing. Don't waste your paper. The message was when Jesus uh, ascended into the heavens, Luke 24, 47, repentance and forgiveness must be preached to every nationality in the name of Jesus, starting at Jerusalem, going forth from there. Can you say amen? That's it. Then Paul come along and said that we must continue in the faith lest we be cut off. And lest an evil heart of unbelief rise up in you and you depart from the living God. So, faith has a way of allowing us to be free of the threatenings of the devil and the God of this world. He come to set us free. How? By telling us, I am always with you. He come to set us free. How? By telling us, he is the light of the world. You don't have to be in the dark on any situation. He come to set us free. How? By telling us, he's omni. Do you believe it and do you receive it? Hey? L-O-W-L-Y. Hey? The L, the second L is for lack, L-A-C-K. Jesus lacks nothing. The earth and the fullness thereof belongs to my Lord. You're listening. 
all the silver and all the gold and all the cattle on the thousand hills, meaning every hill. He just used a thousand, right, for the sake of a number. It all belongs to my Lord, right? This absorbs the provision scenario. Oh, but what about, you know, oh, what about me? It isn't fair. I've had enough and I want my share. Can't you see? I want to live. Well, repent and follow Jesus. If you want to live abundant life, we must believe that Jesus is lowly, not lonely. <laughs> He's not in need and he doesn't need you. He's given you the privilege of needing him. Yes. Eh? yes. So, Jesus, the L is for lack. He has no lack. He will provide, he said, all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Are you listening? Eh? The Lord Jesus is not lonely, he is lowly. Matthew 21, 5 says, Go and tell the people your king is coming. He's sitting on a donkey colt. Well, you can only grasp that by faith. Who's going to put their trust in the donkey riding king? What sort of king is that? Oh, and by the way, uh, like... Uh, the donkey's borrowed. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> the donkey's borrowed. But his disciplined ones, Matthew 21, 6 says, because <clears throat> they were disciplined, they went and did as Jesus commanded. Hey? Next minute, Matthew 21, verse 9. They're saying he's Hosanna in the highest place. <laughs> but he's, listen, he's in the highest place, but he's right in the lowest of animals, save an armadillo. Come on. This is getting a bit confusing, if you know what I mean. No, it's not confusing. It's faith. It's faith. I'd have you know. It's faith. We can't receive this without faith. The Bible says, the Word of God says, humble thyself under the mighty doctrine of the Lord, teaching of God, that he may exalt you. The Lord wants to exalt all his people to the greatest place there is. While... In the mortal body, humility. And it says in Matthew 21, 9, Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Baruch Havah, B'Shem Adonai. Multitudes. But how many will be saying that before he comes? It all starts off lovely, hunky-dory, doesn't it? And there are multitudes of following. Oh, they're laying down the, the, the branches. Oh, they're doing all sorts of things. Start off that way, don't we? I've seen them for years. Oh, pastor, you're this and you're that. Look, oh, the best thing since frozen corn, you know. Oh, you're wonderful. Six months later, you devil. I ain't following you no more. You're this and you're that. All oh, righto. See ya. <laughs> I'll be praying for you. Multitudes laying down the greens, laying down the branches. Multitude went before and those who followed cried out. How long does it last? 
If we are humble, we'll continue on. I don't look at conversion that much. Not these days. I look at consistency. Continuance. Just because you're converted, it doesn't mean you're going to be saved from the fires of hell. Many have been converted. But go back. Hey? Many go back. Are oh, you preaching to the converted? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> you preaching to the converted again. When were you converted? Well, it goes back over the years. What about today? Where are you today? If Jesus was to come today, if you were to die today, would Jesus accept you in the beloved? Would you be found worthy of him and worthy to escape? Hebrews 2, 3. Hey? Hebrews 2, 3. That we may be found worthy to escape. Escape what? Escape what? Ultimately the fires of hell. If we treat our salvation in so great a safety zone, cheaply, how shall we escape? We cannot. We will not. No matter how much of the Westminster Confession they confess or proclaim or dish up or dish out. Hey? It doesn't matter. Westchester Cathedral, you're bringing me down. Doesn't matter how much of the Westminster Confession. Oh, that we cannot, you know, um, ultimately lose ourselves. You can't fall from grace, you know. Well, have a look at Satan. <laughs> you can't get any more grace than that. He was behind the throne. That's a prime example. Number one, an initial example of falling from the throne of grace. <laughs> an angel... And not just an angel, the most beautiful of all cherubs and angels. Fell. Booted out. Disgraced. Cast out. Oh, he wouldn't do that. Lucifer served too long. He done too many works for the Lord. Can someone say amen? amen. Multitude. Hey? Matthew 21, 10, and when Jesus came into Jerusalem, listen, all the city was moved. They were moved. Who is this? Hey? Who is this? Go and have a look at Jerusalem today. Are they moved? Who is this? <laughs> Hello? Only a remnant will be saved. We read that in the scriptures time and time again, don't we? The prophet said it. We're calling the prophet a liar, aren't we? If we don't believe. Is that right? Romans 9 Verse 27, Isaiah the prophet cries out, makes it very clear. It's not a whisper, it's a cry. Romans 9, 27. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, only the remnant will be saved. The remnant. You're listening. 
And her father did not leave. Verse 29, Isaiah said, her father did not leave. A seed. That's the immortal seed. The incorruptible seed. Let's go to Peter. Let's go to Peter. One Peter, chapter one, verse twenty-three. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, the seed of a woman and a man, but incorruptible seed. Through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word remains forever. You listening? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Now, I'm going to read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Since you have purified your souls, how? Obeying the truth by the power of the Holy Ghost, showing your sincere love of the brethren with a pure heart. You're listening. The unclean will not enter the kingdom. 1 Peter 1, 22. Obedience purifies. Oh, you don't have to obey the word. You just one side, no way side. You know what I mean? Hey? Cleansed by the blood initially. But then the scriptures go on to tell us that we can have spots on our garments. And have poxy garments. He coming back for a bride, sister. Without spot. Without sin. Blemish. Or a wrinkle. We don't want to hear that. The churches don't preach that. There's no money in that. But that's the message of the lowly Nazarene, not the lonely Nazarene. Have you ever been lonely? Have you ever been blue? Have you ever loved someone like I love Christ? Oh, I can tell you today. There's gladness all the way. When you're loving Jesus. You listening? There's none of this lonely bit. Hey? None of this lonely bit. The lowly Nazarene. He has no lack. He's the light of the world. He is the Omni One. He's the one that is with us always. Can you say Amen? amen. Hey? The scripture reads very clearly. Matthew twenty one four. All this was done that it might be fulfilled. No other reason. No other reason. What the prophets say must be fulfilled. Everything is done to ultimately confirm the words of the prophets who are the, which are the words of Almighty God. He will not have his word put down. It will be fulfilled. It will be for all of this was done. Done to the jot and tittle. Crossing of the T and the dotting of the I. Hey? 
Your king is coming to you. He is a king that is of the highest. The highest. Due the highest respect. Hosanna. In the highest. Hey? L O W L Y. L is for lack. He has no lack. Y is for this lowly Nazarene is none other than Yahweh. 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 Or Yah. The original name of the Lord. Hey? The original name of the Lord. Not Jehovah, the hybrid name. Yahweh means totally self-existent one. Yahweh. Yet, in the writings of Matthew 21, verse 11, he is known as the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Very limited. Very limited. In other words, he's known as a man. Not God Almighty manifested in the flesh. Never in history, never ever in history was there a prophet. Ever. To be deity and man at once. Never. Muhammad, you're out of the race, friend. No hope whatsoever. Muhammad was a man and all men, all men are open and apt for bulk error, especially those with another belief. All men, all men are open to error and are not able to grasp the truth without the spirit of truth. The Holy Ghost. Hey? No prophet ever was deity in man, only Jesus, the Christ. Hey? Lonely, lonely Nazarene. Hey? He's up there crying in heaven. Because someone won't repent. And then we go and read Psalm 2. And it says that he will laugh. At the rebel. And hold them in derision. When we read Psalm 2. Right? When we read the. The scripture. We, we hear of God slaying men, women. And children. We hear of God bringing. Locusts and floods and tsunamis and all the rest of it. But this is not the lowly, lonely Nazarene. It's the lowly Nazarene. The lonely, L-O-N-E-L-Y, Nazarene wouldn't think of such stuff. Hey? When all is said and done... Although we may follow the lowly Nazarene, we will never be little Jesuses, as they say. We are little Jesuses. Or we are Jesus or whatever. Hogwash. We'll always and only ever be the sons and daughters of God. Hey? Only ever is there the sons of God. We will never ever be God or little gods. Hogwash teaching from the devil. That's the devil injecting his pride of life again. Pride of self. High-mindedness again. We're told to cast down everything and anything that would exalt itself against the living word or above cast it down 
It'll end up a stronghold in your mind. We cast it down if it puts itself or they put themselves above the living word of God. We're told to cast it down and trash it. Disrespect the rubbish talk. There's nothing greater. The Bible clearly says, the word of God says that he puts his word above his name. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God remains forever. Hey? Isn't that wonderful? Because Jesus is, we are, and we can be. Because, because he is, hey? Because he is. Matthew 21 and the verse is 12. Then Jesus went into the temple of Father, drove out all those who were who bought and sold in the temple, overturned the tables, the money changers, and the seats of those who sold those. He turned it all upside down, trashed it all. It was going on in the house of the Lord. Hey, there are a lot of people out there that are very lonely and, and sitting in darkness and they're hungry or whatever or thirsty. And, but Jesus, we know him as the friend of the poor. Hey, he's the lover of the lonely who sits in the dark. He's the one who gives bread and water to the weak. He's Jesus, the friend of the poor. Yeah. Hey? Let us be grateful and give thanks to him, the Lord of all lords and the King of all kings, the one who is coming and the one who's here. Jesus, the friend of the poor. When the rain comes down, we know that he's there. When the sun comes out, we know that he cares. He's the God of creation, the creator himself. He's Jesus, the friend of the poor. Hey? Let us be grateful. Let's give thanks to him. Every day. When you put that humble apple or orange in your mouth, don't forget to thank the Lord. Don't forget to to brood on it. Don't forget to 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 ponder on it as you're going down the road and you're finished eating a half an hour ago and you just sort of reflect. Oh Lord, that that bacon and egg sandwich was just so beautiful. But Lord, there'd be no pig and there'd be no chook and no egg only for you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Break into song. I want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Once I was lost. But now I'm found, now my soul is glory bound. I want to thank you, thank you Lord, for saving me. Let's give thanks with a grateful heart. He come in humility to us. He didn't come puffed up and looking down his nose, saying, oh, well, I suppose I'd better help you, Mother Low Life. Like you see these Roman Catholic priests, Anglican priests, looking down their snouts, thinking there's someone out of the box, and they're not. They're ignoramuses, void of the truth full of great swelling words of nothing. 
denying the Word of God every minute of the day. Eh? But the lowly Nazarene, he come riding the foal of the donkey. This is, this is, I'm talking about the light of the world. I'm talking about the Omni One, the all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present. I'm talking about the one who said, I will be with you always. I'm talking about the one who lacks nothing. I'm talking about Yahweh, totally self-existent one, needs nothing and no one. But came riding to us and came down from another planet and came down when he got here, he came down further to humble himself onto the foal of a donkey and humbled himself even more and borrowed it from a human. Well, I love, I love that man from Galilee. That prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Well, he saved my soul and he done so much for me. He forgave me of my sin. And put the Holy Ghost in me. Well, I love, I love that man from Galilee. Our message today is the Lonely Nazarene, part two, second of the night, 2012. Everybody in the house. Agreed and said, Amen, amen and Amen and Amen.